call CVSAN at 537-0757 or stop by our office on Marshall Street for free assistance to start food scrap recycling at your multifamily complex. I'm Mark Krogan. I'm the principal at Canyon Middle School. Uh, I came to Castro Valley in 1991 as an assistant principal at Canyon Middle School. Um, prior to that, I had taught 15 years in uh, Newark Unified School District. And uh, prior to that, I'd gone to UC Berkeley, the greatest college on, on the planet. How could anybody not like UC Berkeley? Uh, I grew up in Hayward. I uh, went to Hayward High School, Bret Hart Junior High and East Avenue Middle School, uh, and then before that, even all the way down in the Kennedy Park area, I went to uh, Sunset Elementary and Cherryland for one year. Um, my father was a teacher in San Lorenzo, so teaching's in the blood. I have a brother that teaches at Canyon Middle School, so um, we're just uh, enjoying the education life. I came, uh, the first five years I was the assistant principal at Canyon Middle School uh, and then I went for seven years to Marshall Elementary School and I was a principal there and the last 10 years I've been at Canyon Middle School as a principal so my career in Kester Valley has been 22 years. What are some of your, what are some of the, the, your fondest memories looking back over your, your career? Wow, um, that's a really good question. Um, you know, one of the things that jumps out right away is 9-11. Um, I was a principal at Marshall at the time. Um, we all woke up that morning to hearing that there was something going on and great chaos to what was going on. Um, I knew I needed to get to school early that day. Um, I got to school. There were lots of very nervous parents, um, lots of nervous staff. Uh, about what was going to happen. Um, we heard about an additional uh, tragedy that happened that morning also, so people were really uneasy. Um, what was really interesting also is we had some Muslim uh, students on our campus, um, and um, there were several uh, families that were feeling really uneasy. And one mom relayed a story that, uh, that really, really touched my heart when it was all done. Um, uh, Mohammed was the student's name, but he went by Michael, and Michael was probably a third grader. He might have been a second grader, and mom pulled him up to school, and she was nervous to drop him off, and uh, he, uh, he turned to her and said, Mom, what's to worry? Mr. Krogan's there. He'll take care of me. I'll be fine. And uh, as she told me, she started crying. I started crying. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, against terrorist attacks, this kid thinks that I can protect him. Uh, but it was just a sweet moment that, that a student and a family had that much confidence in what we were doing, that, uh, that they did feel safe to come to school and um, that it was a good place. Um, so that was one that really, really made me feel like, wow, you're making a difference. Um, and the school's making a difference to staff. Because not just one person, it's, it's all, the whole staff would have to make the community feel that safe to do that. Uh, what will you miss most now that you're, you're retiring? Into the the kids, absolutely the kids. Um, every single day is different. Every single day they come with something different, something's going on with them. They, they had a perfectly great day the day before and then something happened. Um, something in their lives just kind of flipped and they come that next day not as well put together as they were the day before and uh, to kind of help them through that uh, is really something that I'll miss. Vice versa, as things go really good in their life, they've, they've won a trophy for soccer, they've, for dancing, for music, for something at church, something somewhere else. Um, it's just fun to watch them do that. Um, the other is to watch families transition into a school, to, to help, help families that have maybe been a little bit disconnected with school to find a place. Um, it's always been uh, really nice to have different community members that didn't think about working in the school and get them involved in being a yard duty or get them involved in uh, volunteering on the PTA or coming to a beautification project on campus and then helping them feel a little bit more like the school, like they are welcomed and like we do need their participation in their kids' lives. Uh, and then the staff. Um, 
classified staff, certificated staff, just how hard they work and to support them in that work. I'm going to miss that, miss opportunities to, to work with people that really are committed to what they're doing and give them the tools and the skills uh, and the opportunities to succeed at what they're doing. What are your plans for retirement? Ah. And, and, and what, what, is, what is kind of behind your, your, your choice to retire, if you're comfortable discussing that? Yeah, uh, well, it, it's 37 years. I just turned 60. Um, I can't believe that. <laughs> and uh, one of the things that there's been a downside a little bit to, to being involved in school and um, in what I've done, and it, my family has taken a, a pretty big backseat, uh, especially my wife. Um, long, long days, long nights. Um, she supported me all the way through it, and I am just looking forward to spending more time with the love of my life. We've, we've been married 37 years. I got married two months out, or not even two weeks after I got my first teaching job, and she's been a tremendous support. Um, and the ministries she's been involved in has been really supportive. So I'm really looking forward to spending time with her. Um, we're going to have another grandbaby, our third one in July. Um, so we're looking forward to that. And my daughter's getting married in September. Um, and that'll be a, just a great, joyous time. So I'm really, I'm really looking forward to the next few months of just really getting reconnected with family um, and just um, changing what I've been doing in serving the kids at school and serving the staff and serving the community to be more of a servant to my, to my family and, and, and to my friends. Um, I've started connecting with some friends that uh, we've, I've known for a lot of years but just haven't been able to go do some of those things that we would do. We're going to uh, rent our home in Hayward and we're going to move up to Twain Hart uh, and spend at least a year living up in Twain Heart, California. So there's lots of fishing, hiking, mountain biking, and backpacking, and uh, just lots of fun stuff to do up there, so I'm looking forward to that. In, in, in parting, is there anything that you'd like to say to, to, the, to the folks mm. watching in Castro Valley who are kind of saying goodbye to you? Mm. You know, there would be a lot that I would say. Um, Growing up in Hayward, uh, I always knew about Castro Valley. We, uh, we always competed in sports. I had lots of friends in Castro Valley, and when I got my first teaching position down in Newark, I didn't ever really envision that I would come to Castro Valley. I was um, you know, a kid from Hayward, um, grew up you know, only a couple of blocks away from Castro Valley, but just didn't, uh, didn't know a lot about Castro Valley. A really good friend uh, from church, uh, Bruce Gidlin, was teaching here, and uh, he and his wife Jan, and they just said, you know, you need to come to Castro Valley, and I became really excited about the idea. Um, Dobie Gillis uh, took a huge chance on a, on a kid that had no experience and uh, hired me, uh, brought me in. Uh, I've been mentored by some really good principals, um, Al Honda, uh, and I've had really good superintendents uh, that have stuck by me. I think, uh, and I said this the other night in one of the dinners I was at, uh, there's, a, there's a couple of things that have made my time in, in in Castro Valley very special. And one is uh, the relationship with the school board. The school board in Castro Valley has been so supportive of everywhere that I've been, all the different schools. Um, they've, they've stood by me in times when it was a little bit tricky, um, and they've encouraged me in times when I thought maybe I would go in a different direction. Uh, they've provided me the support and the resources, yet they've stayed in the background. They've, they've done it very silently, but just with uh, a tremendous amount of support. And I'm, I'm so appreciative of all of them and, and, and the support they've given. The other thing that I said uh, that I was really thankful for, and it's really true, um, is the other administrators in the district. Um, and one of the things that I noticed and was very appreciative of is lots of them sent their kids to the schools that I was at. And I think there's no bigger compliment than when your peers put their kids in your tutelage. Um, the community support for me has been amazing. Um, there has not been a business that I haven't approached and asked for their support. Um, uh,
God has been amazingly supportive of me. He has blessed me. Uh, he has gone before me. <laughs> I get emotional just thinking how um, so little skilled I was, yet um, he filled the gaps with either people or families or kids. It's going to be exciting to see what he's got store for me because I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> but I think it's going to, it's going to be exciting and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. CVSAN offers a variety of resources such as food scrap pails and informational flyers to help your multifamily complex start food scrap recycling.